What's going on Reef Builders? We are back in the studio for a short little video. Um, it's not exactly one I had planned to make, maybe especially not with this particular angle, but I wanna to talk to you about my purple tile fish. These are fish that I've actually been looking for since I set up the studio. So it took me about three years to get my hands on some, and I got four specimens. They went through quarantine, and now they're through like the final phases of the quarantine. And uh, so far, so good. And the only thing that's a little bit off is one, is totally blind and i didn't realize this for weeks because he would come out during feeding but he wouldn't actually eat the food um, because he couldn't find it and eventually i noticed that he would um, kind of run his nose along the bottom and finally eat some food that left me with three perfect flawless uh, purple tile fish um, but they for you know it's so strange for such a deeper water fish because they occur around 80 to 90 feet on reef ledges pretty much with like antheus and stuff um, for such a deep water fish they have this strange affinity for the water surface anyone who's ever kept them will tell you these guys are escaped artists you gotta lock them in so you'll see that there's one fish over here and three over there well i put the blind one over here and the other two that are swimming normally they were over here and they were able to hop just right over this barrier and wriggle through now what I want to show you is this guy. We're going to do a little bit of surgery because he was so aggressive at feeding that one day he bonked his head against the glass lid and developed a little swelling. And it's been maybe, uh, maybe like 10 weeks, maybe two, two, yeah, no, sorry, 10 days, two weeks. And um, the swelling continued. And I'll show you now with a little bit more of a close up that he has developed a pretty nasty gas bubble right there on his eye. But the, the flip side is there is no hemorrhaging and there's no infection. So we're gonna do a little bit of a procedure on this guy. Basically just stick the syringe in his eye, suck the air out, and hopefully that'll reduce the swelling and um, let him uh, recover. And so the other two guys that are swimming aggressively sideways, um, those are the guys that are fine with that. Look at that, what are you doing? They're just so freaking hungry, but they really are such a stunning, beautiful fish. And then um, I think, it's gonna be this one right here. You wouldn't know it by looking at him, but he's blind. He just doesn't react, um, but he eats really well. So we're gonna show you also how we've um, kind of started uh, target feeding him, basically. Yeah, I'm pretty sure that's the one. All right, so we're gonna set up to do a little bit of uh, surgery on this guy right here. And uh, I know it's a little bit gross, but I know it's definitely gonna help the fish recover. So as you can see, this uh, affected tile fish is conveniently just hanging right here in the corner. He's not breathing fast. He's still eating pretty well, um, but clearly that much pressure on his eye cannot be comfortable. So we're gonna secure him against the glass, um, not pressing on his eye, but just very gently kind of hold him in place. And then using a fresh hypodermic syringe, we're gonna get in there and literally suck out the gas. So hopefully he doesn't move and we can uh, do this uh, little minor surgery right quick. There we go. So we took a pre-wetted towel just to secure him gently. Come on, buddy. We need you to face the other way. No, no, other way. Come on, come on, you're good. So he's still got spunk, so that's, that's a plus. No, we definitely want him against the glass, facing the other way, facing the other way. <laughs> come on, buddy. We, want, we need to show the people how it's done. Turn around, there we go. There we go. Okay, get a little bit more towel on him. All right, Evan, if you can come in here and just hold him nice and tight. All right, so here we go. Make sure, I want to. Can you lower him down? Yeah, a little bit, get him a little bit lower. And let's try not to make sure he doesn't squirm. Mm, it, so the plunger wouldn't activate. <laughs> Come on, so tight. Now I'm gonna be very careful and hit him right where I did before. You see some air, he just kind of leaked out. Come on, buddy. All 
There we go. That's so weird. Look at his eye just going straight back in. Look at that. Look at that. And we got it. Boom. <laughs> Let him go. All right. So we, uh, it's just been about five minutes since we did the, uh, the lancing surgery on this guy right here. And you can see he's swimming a lot better than he was before. He doesn't have all that buoyancy. Uh, keeping his head propped up as much as it was. Um, obviously, it's still swollen, but again, I don't see any infection and I don't really see any hemorrhaging, so we're gonna keep an eye on him. Might put him in some antibiotics later, just as a preventative. And then I got the other two good-looking guys over here, the guys that aren't blind, but despite my best effort, this guy went uh, for a little carpet surfing experience, and that's why he's got a lot of funk on him. And then I put the blind one in here, in his little feeding garden. He gets a little stressed out when I first put him in, but as soon as I put the food in, he gets really, really excited. So um, I'm gonna throw some food in there, and we'll see how these guys react. We're gonna feed the normal guys over here first. Now they just got transferred, but they're such voracious feeders. I don't think they'll mind either way. Hopefully the guy who just had a little bit of lancing will, uh, there he goes. <laughs> so he just got his eye poked out and he's, uh, he's feeding just fine. Everybody's feeding all right. Let's take a closer look here. Yeah, everybody's eating all right, even the dude with the with the eye, even the one that went for a little carpet ride. And now that everybody's eating just fine, we're gonna feed this guy right here in his sandbox. And it's actually really funny to watch him eat because you'll notice he's just, he's just blind. He just has to kind of search all over the place for the food. And we put a lot of food in here because he has to get a lot of, uh, I can't really do this every single day. Let's get a look here. Come on, buddy. I know you. I know you're sad, but he'll he'll get the hang of it. There he goes. See, so he can't see the food, but he's learned to kind of just uh, drag his mouth along the bottom in order to run into the food. Come on. There he goes. Come on, buddy. You can do it. There you go. And so we'll leave him in this little sandbox for about 10 minutes, um, really fill him up. So um, I try to do this, since I re realized that he was blind, I'm trying to do this uh, two or three times a week. You see, he can't even see that giant pile of food right there, right in front of him. So he's just got to drag his mouth along the bottom until, I mean, it's so frustrating to watch him like be a millimeter away from a piece of mysis shrimp and uh, then he'll jump into it. So, you know, anytime you get new fish, uh, you'll come across some of these interesting challenges. I don't want you to think at all that tilefish have eye problems. Um, this is a really, really freak occurrence of having an, uh, just a totally blind fish. Um, he probably suffered some mechanical injury at some point in his uh, transport from the wild to here. I don't think, he, he had that from day one, so I don't think it happened from bumping against the glass. And the only challenge with these tilefish is they're such voracious feeders that they just bounce up against the glass and if they get spooked um, like that one did uh, you know they can get uh, a little bit of a you know an eye issue but this is not the first time I've had to deal with the, the gas bubble formations um, I think one of my oldest videos I think from 2007 2008 was me lancing a clownfish that had a big eye problem and got rid of the gas and the fish did pretty he did fine he lived for years after that I didn't even have to treat him with any antibiotics so um, I think these fish are gonna be pretty good we're gonna give them one final round of treatment before the two flawless ones are gonna go into a reef tank where they're gonna have a lot of room to swim around, some daylight lighting to really show off that nice blue purple coloration and a soft mesh net. So when they do try to jump, they're just gonna trampoline back into the tank. So um, I hope this was uh, fun and informative for you guys. If you have any questions about you know treating certain fish ailments, especially you know the gas bubble thing, uh, put those questions down in the comments below. If you have any questions about purple tile fish in general, or if you have a purple tile fish or other tile fish, um, share your experiences with everyone so we can all learn um, from your own observations. So thanks for watching this video. Make sure to like, comment, subscribe, and we we'll catch you guys on the next one. Bye guys.